How would you describe life as a young Olu Okeru? Well, it was. Uh, it looked tough then, but now I find what of those values impacted on me. Because when I look at what is going on in Nigeria right now, I won't get scared. If you look at countries like India, countries like uh, Pakistan, the children are running industries abroad. But if you look at Nigeria today, everybody wants to be a singer. Everybody wants to be a DVD. Everybody wants to go on Instagram. The values are completely different. I guess those were, those were the things that my parents saw in those days mm -hmm. and insisted that they wanted us to study well and keep indoors. And I thank God um, I can feel the difference today. Was it comfortable or did you find it convenient to obey your parents, you know, growing up at that time? No, if one wouldn't find it, uh, uh, that's exciting because, you know, people get carried away with what other people do outside. You know, like you can see now, everybody everybody in the society right now is about bling, bling, bling. You know, but then my father was a very conservative man and he wanted us to remain conservative in all the things we practice. Even the church we attended, the Orthodox Church, was all about conservatism. But today even you see that the mode of worship has changed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you worship at one of those Pentecostal churches and all they talk about is uh, it's, it's prosperity. I'm a Baptist, that's it. Ba Baptist, okay. You make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> that's conservatism. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real way to worship God. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sir. You studied medicine. Yeah. So how did you get into real estate? Those are two different worlds. Necessity is mother of invention. When I came to Lagos and I was doing my house job in St. Nicholas, my car broke down on the road. And I went back home to tell my dad to help me fix my car. I looked at me and said, I've sent you to school, I'm done with you. So that got me thinking, I should not be a burden on to anyone. So I started off by making burglary proofs and wrought iron furniture. Remember in the very early 90s, late 80s, we were making wrought iron furniture. So I started with that. And gradually I found out that there was more one could do in terms of civil engineering. Mm -hmm. And I hated going around begging people for contact. I don't like begging people for things. I like to do things and then come and buy from me. So that really led me to see what I'm building house all over the place. Okay, you said in one interview that I saw that you lived partly in Austria or you studied partly in Austria, then in the Caribbean. Yeah. Would you say this living in these places influence the of way you live, did. the way you think? They did, yes. My living in Austria taught me about the touch of the European way of life. They're very practical people. You know, they work hard, you had extreme weather, you had, you know, cold winters, and they, all they did was work. In the Caribbean, talking about leisure, in the Caribbean, it was a tourist attraction, so they had flowers all over the place. They made the best of what they could, you know, what, what, what they have out there, they made the best of their water, of their climate, you know, it was this all-round tropical weather in there and was a tourist destination. So that has affected my way of thinking in terms of gardening, in terms of horticulture, and so on and so forth, okay. in terms of this to today. But do you still go back to this country? Yes, I do go there once in a while. We were in the Dominican Republic in Punta Cana a while ago, and it's, it's fun, it's still fun out there. It's not as safe as it used to be. Okay, but I can tell from what I'm seeing around here now that your taste for design is Victorian. So why not something contemporary or minimalist you know, something? Things, contemporary things go out of fashion. Contemporary things that you, you know, like you see, you know, they're modern, but they go out of fashion. But when you see things that are Victorian, they last forever. You want to be a roof, your roof the peak should be high. It doesn't retain any water, and the water just flows down. Contemporary roof, they use flat roof for nearly, you know, that will retain water. And they use a lot of glass paneling and so on and so forth. Their, their designs are completely uh, inordinate. But I like ordinated things, things that uh, will stand the test of time, things that speak volume. So the Victorian way of life for me is still the best way to go. Yeah, okay. Mm. Now, you, you, you're Victorian in your taste and everything, but which, which country would you say is a preference when it comes to design and furnishing? Wow, that's a very powerful question. I must say, Yatoro as a, as a journalist. Now, let me take you down this way. I love the French design. You know, if you notice this house is fashioned after 
the Versailles Palace. I was going France. to say that is. But French designs are very good, you know. They go a long way. Now, I also love Russian designs, you know, because those were also from the 17th, 18th century too. Russians do a lot. So I have, the, I have a mix of the French, I have a mix of the Russian, and then I like the Finnish, external finishes of the British. Mm -hmm. So those three people actually uh, affect my way of thinking. You know, I'll call it the Renaissance designs, yeah. you know, Renaissance mm -hmm. from Renaissance time. Okay. But wouldn't I say that all this put together has an effect on even the designs that you put together for your clients, how to work? Aside what you, we are seeing here. For my work, I don't use material designs because the Nigerian market is not that uh, lucrative. The material design is very expensive to put together. Mm -hmm. So for my work, I just use practical designs, but I do British finishing outside. Okay. Because we, we end up cladding most of our buildings with marble that so you don't have to paint from time to time. You know, but we don't go that far into the Victorian But I'm sure you have had one or two clients who will have requested for that kind of design, who have your kind I, of taste. I, yeah, I love the it is, but they don't love to spend money. So <laughs> I don't, I'm not the business of working with people, so I stay clear of that. When I give them the house, they can go and whatever they want to do inside it. Okay, so at what point exactly did you develop your taste or love for Rose Royce cars? Well, Rose Royce cars, let me tell you one story. Um, it's not good to be a poor man. And the pain of a man starts when his car breaks down on the road. I'm sure even you as a beautiful lady, maybe I'm married now, but I'm sure when you were single, if a man with a broken car on the road stopped you and said hello to you, you probably just ease at him and go on. Because women don't like to suffer one bit. Now for me, cars punish me a lot. My car used to break down on the road. It used to break down, it was an embarrassment. At the time, I had a car and that the car had the uh, problems. The, the, the car had so worn out that it was gulping one gallon of engine oil per day. Mm -hmm. And I had to use an, something called an adapter and put a spark plug in it so that you could expand the adapter to the spark plug. Those days, that car, you could not even drive from one place to the other because when you were driving that car, the smoke emitting out of the car, into the car, would give anybody asthma. You know, so I saw that level of poverty in car and it paid me so much and I cried out to God and I told God, God, I want to punish it back. Whatever has punished me, I want to deal with it. And I beg God to give me the best. And gradually, I found out that the two cars I loved most were the Rolls Royce and the Bentleys. Mm -hmm. But I found out that Rolls Royce had a better advantage because they had a higher uh, room inside for hats. You know, in Nigeria, we put on hats or caps. So finally, I settled in for the Rolls Royce, and it has been like that since then. Okay, you once said in an interview that car for a woman is his, for a man is his pride. Yeah. Would you say that has been the case for the brands of car in your garage? Well, I don't know. I'm not a proud person, but I like what I like. What I like is I stick to what I like. You know, it's like the case of a, a man being satisfied with what he wants. If not, the man will get into polygamy. So I don't want to get into polygamy. So I've, I've stayed with one brand. Yeah, but I know you have more than one Rolls Royce. How many cars do you I have? Don't, I don't. I will not tell you how many cars I have. I don't. I'm not in the business of of selling cars. But okay, which Arari is your latest addition? Is it the Phantom, Colina, or Wraith, or Dawn, or which one no, is it? No, I, I stick to the Phantom. I personally don't like the smaller cars. I like. I mean, when you want to buy something, you buy something that has space. I believe that those smaller Rolls Royce cars are for small boys, they're not for accomplishment. I like. I like value for money. Okay. Mm. All right. So, which is your list, list of addition? You still have no answer. I don't know about that, but I have, I have, I have uh, the latest Phantom. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. 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 So, what was the first your first driving experience of the Rolls Royce cars? I know most times it's chauffeur driven, but which when exactly did you really experience the car yourself? I experienced the car more in the UK. You know, okay. In Nigeria here, you have to drive, but I experienced the car in one in the UK where you can drive for four hours, five hours non-stop. Okay. And the roads are smooth. But in Nigeria here, 
one gets chauffeur driven, so it's not really many places to go to here in Nigeria. So, so when do you enjoy it most? When you drive it yourself or when you are chauffeur driven? Both ways. When you are when you are driving in Rolls Royce in London, you know you are driving a car. You know the greatest advantage of a Rolls Royce is that when you put an egg on, on top of the engine, it will not rattle. You know that's the greatest um, thing about the Rolls Royce advert. So you can imagine driving that on uh, on a smooth road in London, it's joyful. And then in Nigeria, yeah, when you uh, when you enter the long wheel base, no matter the traffic, you're able to stretch your leg in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I pray Nigeria gets better so that uh, all of us in this country will be even in a Rolls Royce mood. Oh, oh, yeah. that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Um, if it's not Harar, which other has to go on the flow? If it's not what? Rose Rose. Rose Rose. Mm. Well, probably a Bentley, oh, which okay. is also a British uh, market. brand. Yes, yeah. Why? Why Bentley? But, why? Bentley drives fast. You know, the road grabs it when it when it's moving. You know, it's a very smooth, very fast moving car that grabs the road. It's also nice. Okay, so your taste for music is classical, and yes. I even understand that you have an orchestra named after your your company. Yes. Yeah. What is good music to you? Good music is music that is expressionable, you know. When you look at um, music, look at the various instruments they use for making music. Look at the string instruments, look at the air instruments, look at the percussions, look at everything. And then when you go further up and you look at music from the 70s and the 80s, even from the 60s, you see soul music in there, you know, expressive music, romantic music, baroque music, non-civil music. But this, this Nigeria, you guys are misinterpreting. Yeah, bang, 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 bang. Uh, I see something for your face, well, should you roll down or if you, know, you know my story, you know, do a leg back. But, you know, what do we do? We flow with it and we're enjoying it. <laughs> mm. I know you are a fan of orchestra performance. Which composer is your best, Beethoven or any of us? Uh, I would think Mozart. Okay, Mozart. Mozart is my is the best one. Okay. But I saw in the house that you have a customized piano for you. Can you tell us a story about that organ? We saw in the house. Well, we have an organ. I wanted um, a large organ featured in this house. I, I first of all called on. Um, the British organ builders, Manda and Manda, mm. and then Harrison and Harrison to come and look at installing their pipe organ in here. And they helped us with the designing the organ chamber for the house originally. Having gone far with construction, we found out that if they had inside, brought in their own type of pipes in here, I'd have lost space, I would have lost a lot of space in my chapel. Mm. So because of that, we decided to we decided we're not going to use them any longer. Then I went to a church somewhere in Atlanta and I had a Manda organ playing there. It's a, it's a very big church there. And I then after I went to Allen and told Allen, could you reproduce that? And they said they could. And it took them a while and we thank God we have the biggest organ in Africa right now produced by them. And the second G five seventy two ever be produced, and yeah. it's doing well. That's that's interesting. That's mm. what I'm So you know, you have a home overlooking the lagoon, a garage full of cars, and it is been furnished apartments. What is luxury to sell you okay? Love this peace of mind. Love this peace of mind when you know that the things you've asked God for, God has not given you. God has given them to you. When you have peace of mind, you, are not, you don't have any ill health. You know, you don't have any, you're not striving with anybody. You know, don't lose simplicity. I look at one of your your gentlemen that came with you now with a suit, very tightly sewn and everything in there. I guess that's the new fashion. You know, so he's living in luxury too. So luxury is whatever way you, you wish to do it, but also you have peace of mind. Because the only piece of mind would have allowed him to wear the kind of suit he's wearing that is so tight on his body. <laughs> you know, so that to me is lovely. Mm. All right, sir. Mm. Are you a big fan of yachts or private jets? Uh, well, or you don't? I look at them, I see them, you know, I watch them. Maybe when God blesses me, I'll start being a fan of them. I don't. <laughs> 
And you don't want to own one yet. I don't know everything is in the hands of God. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Your home is next door to the Lagos Lagoon. In addition to enjoying the breathtaking view, did you sail on it at one time on the boat? Once in a while, yes, we went on the water. I would go for a drive and come back. Once so, how would you describe the experience? It's nice. It's... I just wish that uh, we, as citizens of Nigeria, could help Nigeria do better. Number one, we need to watch how we dispose waste. Mm. You know, we need to watch how we dispose of this. We need to watch how our drainages are handled, and so on and so forth. Because, you see, God gave us a clean earth. Mm -hmm. If we dispose things properly and clean up everywhere properly, we'll have a cleaner nation. Mm -hmm. The lagoon could be far, 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 far cleaner. But it's because of the infrastructure deficit that has occurred over the years. You know, we, I pray that one day Nigeria gets back up. Do you ever have time to relax? We're relaxing now, we're chatting. This is relaxation. So okay. beyond boxing, beyond tennis or swimming, what else do you do to relax? Well, um, by chatting like we're doing right now, by taking it easy. Do you enjoy easy. travel? Oh, I do, I enjoy traveling a lot. Which is your favorite destination? As you ask me very, very, very deep questions. Um, I love the Caribbean, I love Europe. I love, um, the Caribbean is good in terms of their cuisine. It's nice. And then I love parts of Europe that have Caribbean affiliation. You know, since I used to live in the Dominican Republic, I love anything that the Spanish base. So I've enjoyed uh, a bit of traveling to parts of Spain this year. You know, I like the way they deliver their fish. Mm. I like the scenery in there, you know, it's not, it's not about that. I love America too, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. New York, you know, different places. A bit of each one from time to time. Atlanta is lovely, very lovely place. You know. Do you speak another language aside? I speak Spanish, okay. I speak Latin, I speak Portuguese. Are you passing down to your kids as well? Well, you know, these children who first them, I hope they learn. <laughs> <laughs> and my, I think my third son is doing a bit of it already. You know. Okay, so your experience traveling around the world, what would you say is, what, how would you describe your Lagos? Lagos? Yes. I think Lagos should be the best place on earth. But I wonder how we're going to make it the best place of on earth again. I enjoyed Lagos 20, 30 years ago. 20, 30 years ago, I could drive down to Suleri, to a place called Mama Calaba in the 80s. Mm -hmm. We go and eat a um, banokro and buy the gizzard. 20, 30 years ago, I could drive down to Sule and go and buy um, uh, this thing you call uh, the hand roll, the hand pack it. Was it Terry Burger? Terry, it was not a burger, it was a um, hot dog. It was something like a hot dog, it was a wrap. We used to go or in shawarma. there. Shawarma. yeah. You know, we used to go and buy the shawarma in there. You drive down to Ikeja and buy. Um, Suya from Kingsway in Kenya. And this stretch on the Zumba by the way, we had the Zumba. Well, lot, lots of bars, lots of bars in there. We could go down there, you know, then. But now everything seems to be going down, 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 down. Insecurity. Once you land at the airport, you start getting to international airports, you start getting into all sorts of stuff. I remember then I used to travel in on British Caledonian and I could just take a car home, you know, from the airport then. I pray for better times again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is your life philosophy? My life philosophy is to just try and become a better person. I want to be, get closer to my God, try and become a better Christian. Let the values of God supersede the values, my own selfish inordinate ambitions. That's the most important thing for me. So what drives you as an individual? What drives me? Um, God. God, because nobody knows tomorrow. Mm. Nobody knows tomorrow. So because of that, you just have to cleave on to God so that uh, things end well with you. But you know, I was going to ask you that it's very rare for to have someone of the caliber, you know, mention God, be afflicted with God and all that. Would you attribute that to your upbringing or it's just the personal development. The reality is that God is God, you know. I've seen a lot of things in life. I've seen people who are up suddenly come down. I've seen people who are down suddenly go up. So everything belongs unto him. Every damn thing belongs unto him. And because of that, 
You have no choice but to get closer to him. Okay. You also once said that to build your brand. How has that phrase helped you to build your own personal brand and your business brand? Well, I think your personal brand should be your business brand, and your business brand should be your personal brand. Because if you don't intermarry them, then you'll be, you'll be running a tussle. Once you have the two of them going together, that means you are representing yourself and working for yourself, and that way you can get things going on better. Okay. Do you have interest in literature? Yeah, I do read. I read a lot. Okay. What kind of books do you read? Philosophical books. The Bible, for instance, is very important. That's the Word of God. Then you read stories about, you know, things that have happened in the past, Shakespeare, Macbeth, you know, you read a lot of books. They help you think. Okay. They help you figure out, you know. There's nothing that's happening now that's never has not happened before. Mm -hmm. Life is just going in a cyclical manner. Mm -hmm. Which of your favorite verse and chapter in the Bible? Do you have any? Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God and the feminine show it is and the work. Mm, that should be Psalms. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Is there any book that you're currently reading? Well, in relation to what you're doing right now, I read Rob Reports all the time. I'm always reading Rob Reports. I'm always reading Architectural Digest. I'm always reading GQ. Mm -hmm. So I can study this man you brought to me, the type <laughs> suit. You know, and then I, you know, read things about luxury to, to, to enhance my thoughts. But is there any author that is your favorite? Author, none. Anyway, so you just mentioned um, Shakespeare, Macbeth. Could yeah. be Shakespeare, could be. Well, those are. They're you, classical books. You, they're works <laughs> that you still see different, different. I know, you know, these, some of these books, life is changing now. A lot of things we read in books before. We now read on, on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is, is an electronic book on its own. They send mm -hmm. these things, you know, they band it around all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you read them, you get some sense from all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. the, world, the world is changing. Yeah. The world is changing like you women now, you know. We don't know which of you has long hair or short hair. You, you see different, different kind of yeah, books, from <laughs> different views, different things. So I like things, you know, concise. WhatsApp is making us look at life in a very concise manner now. Okay, but considering your generation, how have you been able to blend and adapt to the technological age? Well, you know, when the computer first came out, I didn't want to use that thing. I, I, I fought against it, but I realized that if you don't understand how to use computer, you're not going to do anything. When telephone came out, I mean, this WhatsApp thing came out, I used to shout on everybody, don't use your telephone when you're eating. Don't use your telephone, don't bring that. But you can notice now, I just with the newly married people. <laughs> Old married people in those days, they didn't have to contend with uh, telephones. Telephone. It was landline. You understand me? And there was a time to take telephone, landline. I'm sure these days, uh, I don't know, I don't know the young men, because the wife will be holding phone, the husband will be holding phone, the children will be holding phone. Maybe they'll start marrying phone the next, this, uh, they start putting phone wedding rings on it or something. I don't know. It's getting crazy, it's getting out of this world. But with the advancement in technology, do you ever feel left behind in between? Do you still or you're trying to play catch up with some things like Instagram, Facebook, and all those things. Well, you know, I just look home. I look for me for someone to be dancing and putting themselves on Instagram. For me, that looks like Sony City. They are looking for something. Because <laughs> why would I be dancing and I put myself dancing in there? It shows some form of deficiency. Yes, for branding, yes, you can put yourself up from time to time, you know, mm -hmm. realistically. But I found out that we are abusing it in Nigeria. I, I, there's nothing wrong with Facebook. There's nothing wrong with uh, LinkedIn. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Instagram. But the moment you start using it, I've not met you before. You start soliciting phones and you start telling me long stories. That, that, that pushes me off. Mm -hmm. You can bring in your business and I can see, can we work on something together? But the moment you start becoming that level, then I think it becomes dangerous. Are you on social media? Are you on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter? I'll leave you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and now, to the last few questions. Yeah. I've seen, when we were here, I saw you with a very unique shoes and all that. How much of, how much do you love shoes? And how shoes. often do you collect them? Well, for me, my my shoe size is huge. I, I'm on 46, 47. Yeah. So it's difficult to get them. So once I get them and they look different and they look, uh, I, I go for them. I, I just love color. I, I, that's one of my weakness, shoes. Yeah. Occasionally, you see cognac. Which is your favorite brand? Cognac. I, I used to see a lot of cognac, but now I've switched over to whiskey, single malt whiskey. Mm. Why do? 
because it contains this uh, sugar and I'm trying to lose weight. I hope you're listening. Are you a collector of hearts? Do you collect hearts? I used Vision. to collect a lot of hearts in my former house, but I can, as you can see, this present house is Victorian, so I don't have much space to display anything there, barely. So I stopped collecting hearts for a while. Okay. So yeah. which other things do you collect in addition to your cars, watches? Books. I don't collect anything. <laughs> I don't know. You face your questions. I keep things that I like. That's all I do. Okay, so what are the things I keep that you like? I don't know. I keep things. I keep CDs, old CDs, James Bond movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> I keep my magazines, you know. I keep things that I think I like. Old music, good music, good technology. You know. So that means you're still a fan of the turntable, are you? Well, no, you get the music, you whip them onto your hard drive, and you're, you're on, you're enjoying it. That's uh, the way it goes. Okay, so finally now, what advice do you have for the millennials as an entrepreneur of note? Well, advice I have for the millennials, next year, 2020 is looking like the world is going to go into a recession, a huge recession. I can foresee it coming. So I think for us all, we all have to cut our coat according to our size. This is not about us saying that we buy it, we cast it. It's not going to happen. No. We can see it coming. We should all just prepare for it all and then um, keep everything simple and I'm sure we'll get out of it very soon. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you for coming. God bless you.